I'm gonna walk through what happened to bounce rate inside of Google Analytics 4 and then how it's been changed, where you can find it, and ultimately, uh, should you use it inside of your reporting. So the best way I found to understand bounce rate is actually by understanding engaged sessions, which is a newer metric. So the way you can do that, if you go into any of your reports, uh, let's just go into traffic acquisition. And if you hover over a metric, Google will give you their definition. So it's not something you need to memorize. So when we go here to engage sessions, here we could see an engaged session is any session that lasted longer than 10 seconds or had a conversion event or the user visited two screens or pages. So essentially we're combining a few different engagement metrics to kind of give this overall engagement score. Uh, now engagement rates will be the percentage of sessions that met this engaged session criteria. And the way bounce rate has changed is bounce rate is now the opposite of engagement rate. It's basically just a percentage of sessions that did not meet the engaged sessions criteria. So when you look at engagement rate and bounce rate, they should actually add up to 100% because they're each measuring the opposite things. So what I found is you don't often need both metrics because if you know what your engagement rate is, you know what your bounce rate is. It's just the difference. So you could look at them hand in hand next to each other. Uh, and there is ways to customize the Google Analytics for reports to do that, which we'll show in a second. But I found typically just using one of these metrics tends to be good enough. Now, uh, there's a couple of different things we'll get into. So in terms of like unlocking bounce rate and being able to use it inside of GA4, you do need, you do need to customize your reports. Now, this is actually a, a nice feature of GA4 that the previous analytics version did not have is the standard reports in this interface are all customizable. You're not locked into just the way Google has them laid out. So the way you would add bounce rate uh, would be going to customize report. And then right here under metrics, this is gonna give you a list of metrics. You can drag and move metrics around as well. My recommendation here is to move the metrics you care about the most towards the top. That way you could easily see them because one of the issues is you have to scroll to the right the more metrics you add. So if it's a metric you care about, like I'll typically show traffic conversions and some type of engagement all in one view. But um, if it's something you wanna see easily, I recommend putting it towards the front. Now, if you search for bounce rate, you'll see it's right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it right next to engagement rate so we can look at the two together. So we're gonna click apply. And then now here's where I could save this change. So every time I access this report, the, the new metric for bounce rate and the way I have it laid out will be there. I, I, you don't have to do this every single time. You could save it as a new report. I prefer to just sa sh save it to the current report. Otherwise, if you save it to a new report, you now have to edit your report interface to see that new report. So this tends to be the quickest option. So we're just gonna click save here. Now what we'll see is we have engagement rate and bounce rate. And you'll see if you add these up, they'll always equal 100% since we're measuring kind of opposite things. So I personally think this is a better way to measure bounce rate. A lot of the problems with the last iteration of bounce rate were because Google was just measuring uh, if someone completed another event after they got to your page, if someone in theory went to one of your pages and they spent a lot of time on the page, but they didn't click on anything and they didn't trigger any events, maybe they were on the page for five minutes or three minutes, um, they scrolled to the bottom and you didn't have scroll tracking enabled, um, that would count as a bounce. Whereas now we're factoring all these other engagement criteria because ultimately the goal of bounce rate is who landed on my page and immediately left because they didn't find what they were looking for or didn't find it helpful. That's what we're trying to gauge. So factoring in other engagement metrics uh, personally, I found a, a, a more accurate way to gauge ultimately what we're really trying to get at with bounce rate. So now there's one other factor here. So we didn't cover fully engaged sessions and engagement rate. There is a way to configure this. So the one thing here, so the number of sessions that lasted longer than 10 seconds, that part of engaged sections, uh, sessions is configurable. You can change that. So if you say 10 seconds isn't really enough, you could increase the time on that. Um, and I'll show how to do that because I think it's important to think about what does that mean to you and your business? Do you consider 10 seconds, um, enough time in order to, to factor in? If you do leave it alone, if you don't, what you're going to do is go to admin and then we're going to go into the uh, data stream here and then click into your data stream. Then if you scroll down, you'll see configure tags, uh, settings. Now when this loads, what's confusing about this is Google doesn't show everything here. So sometimes you'll land on this screen and kind of forget there's a show more button with the rest of the menu. So you do need to do another click here to unlock everything else. So we're gonna click show more. 
And then right here where it says adjust session timeout, this is going to take you to a screen where you can make some adjustments here. Now, this is the one we care about for in terms of engagement rate. So, and in terms, in terms of bounce rate, I have mine set to 20 seconds. You can go all the way up to a minute. So this is really up to you. I've seen some people do 30. I have seen some people push it a little bit higher. Um, it really depends on your website, what the goals are and what you expect people to do. So I generally recommend increasing it off 10%. Like 20% is typically a good starting point for a lot of people, but you could increase it even higher. So now bounce rate is gonna be a little more strict and engaged sessions are gonna be a little stricter. If someone's on the website for 11 seconds, in my case, it's, it's gonna count as a bounce and it's not gonna count as an engaged session. So this is pretty beneficial where you can dial this metric in and not just use what Google gives you out of the box, but actually tailor your analytics for your goals, for your business, for your website. That's where really the value is in Google Analytics 4. It's not really setting it up as quick as possible and just using whatever Google gives you. It's thinking through like, what are we trying to accomplish? How do we wanna measure these things? And then making the adjustments to either your events, your conversions, or settings like this to align it with uh, what you want out of your analytics. So that's a key little detail. Now, you can also unlock bounce rate in other ways, like in exploration reports. I'm not gonna show that here. Uh, I tend to do all my reporting in Looker Studio, so I rarely use the Google Analytics reports. I use Google Analytics for just to store the data and collect the data and make sure it's accurate. But then I push that into Looker Studio. So it's very easy to get bounce rate into Looker Studio. You would just connect your data source like you would any other chart. Here I'm showing engagement rate and then bounce rate below. And then when you go into the chart builder, bounce rate will just be a metric that you could search for and select. So same thing with engagement rate or engaged sessions, they're all there. So you just need to select that metric and you could add it to any of your visualizations or charts inside of Looker Studio. And now we could start to see the trends over time um, and, and what that looks like. So really uh, with the changes to bounce rate, again, in my opinion, I like the change. I think it's a more accurate way to gauge what we're really trying to get to is, are people not finding what they look, look are looking for when they visit my website? Um, versus did they just not complete another event where sometimes you're factoring in people as a bounce when really they were engaged with your page. So again, I tend to use just one of the two engagement rate or bounce rate because then you could figure out what the other one is just by having that one. Sometimes you don't necessarily need both metrics, but, uh, and I tend to lean towards engagement rate than bounce rate in most of my reports, but you do have the option to add bounce rate back into GA4 or to pull bounce rate into a tool like Looker Studio.